Alright, hi guys, this is Adam Koo here. And for those of you who have been following my YouTube videos for the last couple of months, you know that I've been really bullish on China stocks. And I said that the US market is fantastic, but China is where the massive growth is at. And China stocks are a lot more undervalued compared to US stocks, which are really, really expensive, right? So you can see, for example, in my portfolio, some of the biggest gains in my portfolio are from the Chinese stocks. One of them is, you know, Mei Tuan Tianping over here that I've talked about for about a year, right? Ticker symbol 3690. This is listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. That's right, as they like to call it. You can see, wow, massive growth in the Mei Tuan Tianping still going up, right? And the other China stock which I kept talking about that has been exploding recently is Tencent. Right, so Tencent is the Facebook, WhatsApp equivalent in China, right? They've got the biggest social media apps in China, which is WeChat. And you can see again, uh, the stock exploding all the way up there, right? So if you take a look at my portfolio over here, um, you can see that some of my biggest profits is unrealized profit and loss, right? My biggest profits are actually from the uh, China stocks. For example, this is... 10 cent over here, as you can see, uh, 700, that's the ticker symbol listed in Hong Kong, 178,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars in profit right now. And May Tuan Tianping, for example, where's that one? Uh, there one, May Tuan Tianping over there, 3690, uh, $488,000 in profit. Uh, and of course, Alibaba, 9988, uh, well, that's not taken off yet, gonna take off really soon at about $29,000 in profit. And of course, my US stocks are pretty profitable as well, but the massive gains are from the China stocks. But you know something? They are about 8,000 US stocks. 8,000 US stocks. That's about 5,000 Chinese stocks. Are all of them investable now, nah, right? In fact, I always say that in any market, it's only the top 1% of stocks that are investable. So for example, in the US, there are 8,000 stocks. Out of 8,000, only 80 of them are investable. They pass my seven step investing criteria. In China, there are 5,000 stocks. So 1% less than 50 stocks are investable. But do I invest in all 80, all 50? No, I only invest in the top one quarter of 1%. That's right, the top one quarter of 1%. So of the 80 stocks in the US, I only invested one quarter of them, which is about 20 stocks. And in China, out of 50 stocks, right, at the very most, I invested, again, the top one quarter of 1%, and that's less than 10 stocks, okay? So by investing in only the best companies in any market, you're able to get huge returns. Now, I'm here to tell you that to get huge returns on picking stocks, it has got nothing to do with luck. Absolutely, there's no luck involved, right? It's got to do with knowing how to do deep dive research to find great companies with huge growth potential. So in this video, I'd like to share with you the research I did on Tencent, which is ticker symbol 700 over here, as you can see. Uh, one of the stocks that has, has uh, produced one of the biggest props in my portfolio. And this research report was done back in March. So that was uh, March, April, May, June. Yeah, about four months ago, all right? So this is a sneak peek on how I do my deep dive research and how my community of students get to watch my research reports every single month to know the best companies to invest in every single month. So here's a quick deep dive, a quick sneak peek. Take a look. All right, hi guys. So for this month's deep dive research, we'll be taking a look at a secular growth stock as well as a defensive stock. So let's begin the secular growth stock. And it's one of my favorite all-time stocks in my portfolio. It is Tencent. So first, a bit of a business overview. What does this company do? So Tencent basically engages us in the provision of internet value-added services. We've got VAS, which is social media, and online gaming, as well as online advertising. And not just in China, but increasingly outside China as well. All right, so a deeper look into their business segments. The first would be social media. Now, everywhere in the world, what do we use? We use Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, right? 
for social media. Guess what? All three are banned in China. Uh, all around the world, we communicate through WhatsApp. Guess what? WhatsApp's banned in China. Nowadays, all around the world, we go around uh, you, uh, making digital payments using PayPal and Apple Pay and so on and so forth. Guess what? That's banned in China, right? We use Uber to order a, um, a car. That's banned in China. So China, Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter, they're all banned, right? So what does everyone use in China? That's right. They use Tencent's mobile apps, okay? So in other words, uh, Tencent, their main social media app is known as WeChat, right? as well as Weixin. Now, it is used by 8 out of 10 people in China. The other two are probably dead. No, I'm just kidding. The other two probably have no access to internet because they're in a farm somewhere, you know, milking a cow. Right? So that makes up about 1.165 billion monthly active users. 1.165 billion users, right? That's more than three times the entire US population. So if you think about it in China, um, Facebook, Instagram, PayPal, WhatsApp, if you com combine them all together, you get WeChat. So that's the equivalent of all those apps rolled into one in China. So it is the most widely used communication and social platform and includes integrated mobile payment services, which is known as WeChat and WePay, and it has the ability to connect different service providers through you know, different mini programs. So using WeChat, what can, can you do? You can message your friends like the way we use uh, WhatsApp, okay? And you can update your moments like the way we use Facebook. You can book a ride like how we use Uber, and you can use WeChat, WePay to pay for your breakfast, like the way we use PayPal and Apple Pay. So it's again all rolled into one. The next one is online gaming. Now Tencent is the number one online gaming company, not in China, in the whole bloody world, okay? Second to Tencent is ATVI or Activision Blizzard. It owns the very popular Call of Duty games. And by the way, Tencent owns a big share in ATVI as well. And you've got Electronic Arts that is very, very far behind. Okay, so again, Tencent is the number one video game publisher in the world by revenue. And they've got major stakes again in some of the world's most popular gaming titles. If you're an online gamer, you know thing like, things like League of Legends, Fortnite, uh, PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Online, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, all from Tencent. All right, so now that you really understand what the business does, let's take a look at the numbers. So the first thing is we want the business to have a history of consistent growth in sales revenue, net income, and cash flow from operations. So let's look at the financials. So you can see that revenue has been growing consistently for this company. Uh, in 2019, they recorded 369 billion uh, in Chinese yen or renminbi. Net income after tax also growing consistently with the last 2019 recording 93 billion uh, Chinese yen or renminbi. Finally, cash flow from operations also increasing consistently recording 148 billion uh, Chinese yen in 2019. The next thing is profit margin. So when a company has got a strong competitive advantage, it usually has uh, strong profit margins that are consistent or rising over time. Next, one of the most important things, we only want to invest long-term in a company with a wide economic moat, with a sustainable competitive advantage that protects it from competition. So again, companies with a white mode have little or no competition in its businesses. So is this the case for Tencent? Absolutely. So where does this white mode come from? Number one, its white mode comes from network effect, just like Facebook has a network effect, just like uh, Google, just like YouTube, just like eBay, network effect. So network effect means that the more people that use it, the more people want to use it because everyone is using it, okay? So Tencent has a massive user base, again, over a billion monthly users, and this creates that network effect. 
as more and more active users use WeChat and QQ, right, there's more incentive for third-party app developers to create more and more games and mini programs inside WeChat and QQ. So this in turn will attract more users and more third-party developers. So it's like this beautiful cycle that builds upon itself. Okay, as they are already massive user base using WeChat Pay, more and more merchants want to come on the program because every single merchant is on WeChat Pay and everyone wants to pay uses WeChat. So again, it feeds on itself. So network effect. Next, obviously, is a brand monopoly. Top of mind recall in China when you mention social media, WeChat, QQ, entertainment. So it's number one in the Chinese mind. Uh, third would be uh, high switching costs. So again, high switching costs means that the moment uh, customers use the product, it's very expensive or difficult for them to change to a competitor because all their data is there, all their memories are there, all their friends are there. Okay, and you have to relearn something all over again, just like Facebook, all right? And that's why, you know, when people were saying boy boycott Facebook, you know, one or two years ago, I, I said, I, I don't believe that people are going to leave Facebook. All right, a few assholes will leave Facebook. I'm just kidding, right? But the majority of people in the world will still use Facebook. You know why? Because all our photos, our videos, they're all there. Okay, you're not going to, you know, take everything and leave. It's going to be too difficult. We are locked into Facebook. At least the rest of the world is, okay? I know in the US, they like to use Twitter. I mean, from Singapore. In Singapore, we don't use Twitter. We just use Facebook and Instagram. So again, while it may be possible to switch to other similar platforms with social media, it may not be a good incentive uh, if their friends and families are not on those platforms. So again, everyone's there, so people will remain there. So very, very strong white mode for Tencent. Next, growth drivers. So what is the potential growth driver for this business moving forward? Now, first, obviously, is the gaming industry. The gaming industry has been growing like crazy and will still continue to grow inside and outside of China. Unfortunately for parents with kids who game, right? but good for the gaming companies. So the gaming company is expected to grow 13% annually all the way to 2025, especially mobile gaming. In 2018, the video game market generated 131 billion US dollars and could grow to become a 300 billion industry by 2025. Now, five out of 10 international games with the highest daily active users is somehow owned by Tencent. So think about it, five out of 10 of the most used games are owned by Tencent. And again, if you're a crazy gamer, these games will look really familiar to you, right? Uh, PUBG, PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Brawl Stars, they are all by Tencent. So it doesn't have conservative debt. Uh, pretty much so. So we look at three things. Uh, first, current ratio. Uh, we want it to be more than one. So again, current ratio would be current assets divided by current liabilities. So we want more assets than liabilities in the short term. So the numerator, bigger than denominator, more than one is always safer. Next, we compare the total debt of the company to its earnings before interest, uh, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So basically, uh, this ratio is comparing the debt of the company to its earnings. So how long does it take for its earnings or profits to cover its debt? And we want this to be below three. The lower, the better. And this is only 1.5, which means, in other words, uh, it will take one and a half years for 10 cents profits to cover all its debt, which is very, very conservative. Next, debt servicing ratio. Uh, this compares the uh, net interest expense of the company, how much they spend on uh, interest, divided by the cash flow from operations. And it's, my God, it's less than 1%. So that's very, very conservative. Okay? So one, less than 1% of its cash flow is used to service its interest on its debt. So anything below 30% on that is conservative. It's less than 1%. So very conservative company. Next would be what's the company worth? Now, so the best way to value this company is using a discounted cash flow method. So we take 
uh, we project all the future cash flow from operations the company will generate during its lifetime and we discount it to present value and we then add cash and we subtract debt. Okay, now, but before that, let's take a look at the historical PE comparison. Although I don't place much emphasis on PE or price to earnings ratio, but well, interesting to look at anyway. So uh, you can see since 2011, for the last about nine years, the highest PE was 62 times earnings, the lowest at 22 times earnings, and that just happened very briefly during the uh, 2012 uh, time, okay? Uh, the average is 40.6 PE ratio. Currently, we are at 33. So historically, we are below the uh, historical average PE or price to earnings ratio. Again, I don't place much emphasis on PE, uh, but just to look at, take a look at it. So I place more emphasis on calculating the uh, intrinsic value. So what is the growth rate that we can use to project the future cash flow from operations or future earnings. Um, historically, for the last five years, earnings have been growing at 37%, but moving forward, it's projected to grow at 16% uh, on Simply Wall Street, that's uh, one website, and another one would be Capital IQ, which is another research site, at 21% growth rate. So if I take the average of both, uh, there'll be 18 percent. So we're going to use 18 percent as our uh, rough projection uh, growth for 10 cent. So using our intrinsic value calculator, we plug in the numbers. So 10 cent has uh, cash flow from operations of 148 billion yen or renminbi uh, against 220 20 billion in debt uh, against 187 billion in cash. Okay, uh, so we plug in the 18% growth rate for the next 10 years. Um, and for 11 to 12, we take the GDP uh, plus inflation rate of the country, which is China's inflation rate plus GDP is about 8%. It's got 9 billion shares. We take a discount rate of 14% because it's a China company, so with a higher discount rate. Uh, a lot, some of you may wonder what is the formula for the discount rate. You can take the value momentum investing cost where it's covered there. It's basically the risk-free rate plus beta multiplied by the market risk premium to calculate the discount rate. Okay, so plugging all that in, we get a intrinsic value of 370 yen or renminbi. So this stock is listed in Hong Kong in Hong Kong dollars. So we have to convert 370 to Hong Kong dollars. So multiply that by about 1.11, we get an intrinsic value of 414 Hong Kong dollars. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at the current share price right now, uh, see where it is. So again, bear in mind, intrinsic value is uh, 414 Hong Kong dollars. All right, so let's take a look at the chart. So again, when I look at the chart of a stock or business, I like to start with the long-term chart. So I like to look at the long-term performance. I want to see a very clear uptrend in the last 10 years or more. And we start by looking at the monthly candles. And again, this is uh, from 2015 uh, to now. So that's about 15, 15 years, right? That's the entire length. So you can see that in the long run, 10 cent, is on a very clear uptrend. So that's what I want to see from the long-term chart, okay? And <clears throat> from the monthly chart, I then zoom in to the weekly charts. So let's go to the last five years and let's go to weekly candles. All right, so over here you can see weekly candles over here. And you can see that um, on the weekly candles, um, this moving average, uh, the 150 moving average in green uh, has been a strong level of support over there, as you can see, right? And you can see I drew a horizontal support there, right? The price being supported over there at about 320 uh, or so, okay? Um, so where's our intrinsic value again? We say it's 414. So let me uh, draw that in with a line. Let me draw a line over here. 414. <clears throat> excuse me, roughly about there. 
Okay, and uh, let me color it green. Okay, great. So this green line represents the intrinsic value. Okay, and if I zoom in a bit, you can see right now the price is at 314. That's the current share price right now. Uh, the date today is the 27th of March. Okay, so right now it's 3, 384. Sorry, 384. So we are slightly below intrinsic value. Let's take a look at rough. Uh, so 384 divided by 414, uh, that's about 8% uh, below intrinsic value. So you can see that this stock has been holding up really well during this entire bear market coronavirus, right? The US market is down, uh, went down like 30%. Many stocks are still down 20%, but this sucker did not really go down. Why? Okay, because this is what I call a coronavirus proof, recession proof company. All right, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek into my monthly uh, investment reports that I send to my community of students who subscribe to the Ultimate Investors Playbook. So that was back in uh, late of March at 384. The stock price was 384 somewhere at, at, around there. And since then, you can see it's all the way up now, close to 40% return in less than a couple of months. And it's now at $523 and counting, right? Now, so again, as you see, you know, there's no free lunch in this world, right? If you want to make a lot of money in investing, it's not about just picking stocks blindly. You have to do the research behind the stock. Be behind every stock is a business. When you understand the business, you know which ones are gonna grow and multiply your wealth. And again, you can do all this research yourself by learning how to analyze businesses from the value momentum investing course that I teach. And if you want me to do all the research for you and just see what I'm buying, you can subscribe to the uh, Ultimate Investors Playbook uh, by going to insight.piranaprofits.com that's insight.piranaprofits.com and check out the uh, Ultimate Investors Playbook, which is a, an annual subscription, all right? Now, just uh, let me just say a last few words on Tencent right now. Now, although you can see it's a great company, it's gonna grow in the future and it's like blasting off right now, should an investor buy right now? The answer is no, you, you should not buy right now. Why? Because currently it is overvalued. Right, I only like to buy when it's undervalued. So when I bought it earlier on, it was undervalued. Now it's overvalued. Okay, so if you look at the most recent uh, intrinsic value calculator, you can see the current intrinsic value is about 468 Hong Kong dollars. That's the valuation today. And again, over time, the valuation will change as the company grows in value, right? So right now it's 468. Uh, this green line you see is the intrinsic value, is currently above the intrinsic value. So as investors, we never want to buy above the intrinsic value. A great business can be a lousy investment if you pay too high a price for it. But a great business is a fantastic investment when you pay a low enough price for it. The other thing I always tell my students is to look at the chart patterns, right? Stocks don't go up in a straight line. Always remember that. They go through wave patterns. You've got wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. As an investor, you want to buy only when you get a wave down at a support level and you enter before the next wave up. So looking at the current share price, what do you see? That's right, you see wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, all the way up. So you never want to jump in you never want to jump in on a wave up, all right? You want to wait for a wave down and then you get in when it's undervalued, boom, before the next wave up. So that's the discipline of knowing what to buy, when to buy, how many shares to buy and when to sell. And that's how you grow your portfolio consistently over time and build immense wealth in the stock markets. This is Adam Kuhl. May the markets be with you. I hope you've learned something and all the best. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional Forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. 
If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.